right, Ant, we're finally at the opening of CES. This is the front door. Yep. Today we're going to see uh, Sam Apple Salmon. He's going to show us car stuff. Yep. Lots we're going to see stuff. Dick Bartolo. He's going to show us junk. But I think maybe we just go in the central hall, look around, see yes, if there's sir. anything interesting. Yes, Mostly yes, this is big companies. Yeah, well, look at this wall. Can you believe it? It is this video insane. Wall? Look at this. It is Let's insane. See. Beautiful curved video. Leo and Ant's excellent CES adventure are brought to you from Twit and the Twit LastPass Studios. Securing every access point in your company doesn't have to be a challenge. LastPass unifies access and authentication to make securing your employees simple and secure. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. I wasn't here last year, but one of the big stories of CES last year was Royal that before Galaxy did their fold, they did the first folding screen for it. Right. So you would carry this in your pocket, and that would be your phone screen. Yeah. And then when you decide you want to get a tablet, oh. then you get a oh. tablet. It's plasticky, yeah. but it doesn't feel cheap, you know? Now, this would be one way to watch yourself some movies while you're cooking dinner or something in the kitchen. Put a nice little smart speaker with a curved display. We just saw the uh, Flex Pie, but now we're over here at the Huawei booth and we have their folding phones. Probably the best phone that we're not going to get in the U.S. Uh, this feels so good. At first appearance, I was a little concerned about this notch, but that folds up perfectly with it and feels just like any other standard phone. But then you, you were showing off some other features from a photography standpoint. Yeah, so there's actually a couple features. You can adjust how much to focus Oh, look at on. that depth of field. If this were being sold in the U.S., how much would this be in the U.S.? Well, we don't have a price point in U.S. dollars. Uh, however, just from what I've heard, it's uh, around 15,000 yen in okay. China, so it may translate to about $1,500. Okay. So but this is not an accurate number. It's I would assume maybe two grand. Yeah. <laughs> about 2,000 bucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is nice. So, of course, you can get these on Amazon, but they're not available to the U.S. market. Right. Not available. Here. Um, also, when you shut it, uh -huh. well, yeah, and you it's shut smaller. it and you're in camera mode, okay. you can even add the split screen. So now, oh, split when, screen. I, when you're taking a photo of me, I can see myself in the camera to, to right. readjust how I So you how can I properly look. frame. Yeah, get okay. my frame right so I can get in there. So now, if I wanted to take a picture, a selfie... Boy, look at that handsome gentleman right there. Of course, Samsung's also here with the Fold, but because the Fold 2's coming out, we think in just a couple of weeks, this is kind of last year's model. All right, so we're here at the Panasonic booth, yes. and I wanted to take a look at these beautiful cameras that's going to be great for photographers as well as filmmakers. All right. And we have this SL1, S1 line out here, and my man Matt is going to tell us a little bit about what's going on. Right, well, and what we have here is the S1H. S1H. So it's important to note that all of the S series are going to be great for stills and video, um, but the S1H in particular is extremely well suited for video and stills. Mm -hmm. uh, so much so for video that um, never Netflix has actually uh, allowed this in their post-technology alliance, which means it's suitable for a camera production for every Netflix feature. Right. So um, the camera can do 6K video, actually, at up to 24 frames per second. It can do 5.9K video up to 30 frames per second. It's got all the nerdy stuff, like the 10-bit 422. It's got the all-eye codecs. It's got all the really cool kind of high-tech stuff that they make well, well, Different uh, profiles, whether you have ProRes and... Yeah, V-Log capability. V okay. But then it also has some niceties too, like this little port here we can use for time code in. So okay. if I have to sync it with several cameras, I can have it all time synced together. Oh, nice. And then the no more, no more clappers. Yeah, we, we always still <laughs> want to use the clapper for backup, right? right? Of course. But if we look at the LCD screen, um, a lot of these mirrorless cameras only give you the flip up like this. Right, which I hate. But we give you also oh, the full articulation. Oh, screen. Yes. 
and they actually work together, which means they clear the ports on the side of the camera. Now that's a nice attention to detail. So you don't have to worry about hitting your HDMI connections on the side of the camera here either. So. All right, so we have HDMI, we have audio, what yeah. else we have? In fact, you can even add an XLR attachment on the top, so uh -huh. if you have two channel audio, you can do that. Uh, for photography, it's a 24 megapixel still camera. Mm -hmm. um, we have our in-body stabilizer, so the sensor is going to move right. to stabilize itself. It it's a magnetic field. Right. So we do a little trick with it for photography. Uh, we have a high-res shot mode. It'll move the sensor eight times, okay. take eight images, stitch it all together in camera, and give you a 96 megapixel raw photo. Yeah, that seems to be the way to go nowadays. It's all the computational side of it. Exactly. Now, with uh, the mount on this, this is using a nail mount. This is a EF mount, I'm assuming L mount, right? Yeah, it's the L mount, not not EL like L mount. But right. The L. <laughs> so it's it is the L mount. Mm -hmm. um, we're part of an alliance with right. uh, Leica, who developed right. the mount, and Sigma. So um, the nice thing about this is that, uh, for one, all of our cameras sort of work together with our lenses. So you mount a Sigma lens to this, it's going to behave as if it was built by Panasonic. Of course. Your Leica is going to build behave like. So it doesn't Panasonic. necessarily matter third party versus your first party or some Leica. Well, by 2021, we expect to have 40 lenses is for the system between us, Leica, and Sigma. So if we're not the largest lens right. assortment in mirrorless, we will be the second largest in only two years Pretty period quickly. time. Yeah. Pretty quickly. Yeah. So, now, can, I, can I hold this and see what this feels like in the hands? Of course you can. It's, 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 I trust you're not going to drop it, but yeah. even if you do, it's built like a tank. It's built like oh, a tank. <laughs> i see you later, Coach. All right. Now, this is uh, this feels pretty good. It, it's not necessarily too terribly heavy, but having large hands, I like something that's going to be ergonomically sound. Everything is in the right place for me. And then you give me this bonus very screen out to the side to make it a little bit easier for those low angle shots that I like to shoot. Um, I, I really, really, really like this package here. 35 millimeter sensor, right? Full it's a full frame. It's full frame. And okay. what's important to note is it can do what's called open gate, which means it literally will shoot in its 3 2 aspect ratio. Right. And then you can crop it later. Crop it later. And okay. that means anamorphic lenses, which is real high end cinematography right. stuff. It has all the tools necessary for anamorphic. So I want to point something out. Yes, sir. To get uncropped open gate video in full frame mm -hmm. at the resolutions this can do, there's only two other cameras in the world that can do it. Which other cameras? Well, that'd be an Area Alexa LF. The big one, of course. That's well over $90,000. Yeah, the big one. And that'd be a Sony Venice at $45,000. Right. So for 10 times less, we're getting 90% of what those cameras could do for a film. Outstanding. Outstanding. And it, yes, takes, and it takes photos. Don't forget that either. Now, as much as I'm in, in love with this here, you have this other camcorder that you guys just put out there. So what, what's going on with this camcorder? Well, I think the number one thing I want to make sure we are aware of, for your, for your viewers out there, it's important to note, this is probably going through a little editing process. It's not live it is. streaming. Right. Well, this camera can actually do live streaming through Facebook Live and, oh, man. and also YouTube Live. And the nice thing is it doesn't require a gateway. Some companies require you to go to their website, set up a URL, set up an account with them, and then they'll bridge. Well, this has RMTP protocol, RTMP protocols already built in. So all I have to do is put my um, Facebook uh, URL in, and then my password, and obviously connect it to a web, a, a, a Wi-Fi spot or a smartphone, and then one touch button, I'm on my live stream, ready to go. Now, being at Twit TV, we know just a little bit about live streaming, don't we? <laughs> Probably a little bit, right? <laughs> this feels great. And this is all 4K, up 60 to, frames. Up to 60 frames per What's second? the bit Ten rate bit, for your 10 video? 10-bit internal, 400 megabit all I. Oh, right. 25 times zoom, so it covers 25 millimeters to 600 millimeter equivalency. Outstanding. XLR audio connection on the top. Plenty of ports. Even an SDI port. Outstanding. Outstanding. Yeah. And this now, camera will be about $2,500. About $2,500 for this one. Yeah. Okay. To get live streaming, SDI, 4K, 60 frames. And like a glass on it, right? Yep. F1, F1.8 at the wide angle, F4 at the telephoto, so it's a nice bright lens. Most of the cameras in this segment are maybe about F2.8. I really dig this. All right, well, Matt, thank you so much for showing us these beautiful devices. Uh, this is going to be great for content creators out there looking to step their game up in the world of photography and video and, of course, live streaming because that's the way to go, baby.
So you might think that that's a set behind the Ghostbusters Ghostmobile car. It's actually a screen. Sony's got a, a high quality crystal screen that actually shifts as the camera operator moves. So it completely fools the eye. There's leaves blowing, it's, it's moving. It's not a green screen, it's actually a video screen. If you go over there, and as the camera operator is shifting around it, it shifts in perspective as well. Not something we're going to buy. But boy, you can see why a movie maker would want it. You want to shoot during golden hour, you don't have two hours a day to do so. Right. You simply gather the data during golden hour, you've now got however long you need to capture the film. Uh, with this, oh you can goodness. see what your shot looks like. I mean, the crystal LED is casting a reflection on the hood of the car. You know what it, look, it looks like as you're recording. All right, we're in the artificial intelligence and robot section. Are you ready, white face? Push side! <laughs> yeah, good job. August, ready, and push side! No, August, please, no! Robots to deliver your food. This may be the best robot here. It helps <laughs> helps keep you fed. <laughs> and then there was the pet training robot. You've heard of iRobot. Here's Hobot. A window cleaning robot? What was that you just said? Hobot. Hobot. <laughs> oh, rollover. Nice. He's got his tummy in. <laughs> Tell me a joke, please. If robots can't identify stop signs or traffic lights and capture images, maybe self-driving cars are a bad idea. <laughs> are your eyes okay? Right. That's damn right. <laughs> I can perform customized tasks in hospitals, hotels, smart offices, airports, museums, schools to interact with human beings and help them. If you want to take pictures with me, please do in one line and I am happy to decide you with smiles. And of course, Omron's ping pong playing robot is back after its hit engagement last year. Still very, very popular. Ooh, hello, hello. This is my new friend Liko, right? <laughs> what does my friend Liko like to do? Walks, talks, dances. Wait a minute, this Feature robot dances? Yes. Yeah. Hey! You see the camera over there, not me? Can you look over there? Or you just want to talk to me? <laughs> trying to collect the data. Yeah, gotcha. Ah, okay. All right, you see our camera? Say hello to Twit TV. There we go. You said this will be available later this year? Yeah, later this year. Will you dance for us? Do a dance, Liko? Outstanding. You're, you're a better dancer than I am, Liko. <laughs> I think I found Ant's next ride. Massive. <laughs> is the Evo 2 already available for us? Uh, it's in mass production right now. It's, uh, we will be available within a month. Okay, yeah. so so we'll say Q1 2020, the next Autel Robotics uh, drone. This is the Evo 2. Uh, what's the price point we're looking at? Uh, the AK1 is $14.95. Fourteen ninety five eight K camera. Yeah, the wow. one inch six K is seventeen ninety five. All right, so with yeah. the one inch sensor on yes. the on the six K, yes. and that's seventeen ninety five. So Mandy, that's pretty competitive there. Do you know the video bit rate with these? Uh, F AK is twenty four. Twenty four Twenty five. Okay. Six K will be four. Four six. Okay, so we're gonna get a lot of data yeah. with these. A lot of times with drone footage, you don't have enough data to work with when you're doing your post processing. So you have to be really careful unless you're shooting like in log format. Then you get a little bit more liberty with it. But you got a whole lot of data being packed into this one. I'd love to get my hands on this and play with this and y'all get it released for. It. We got our great colleague Sam Abu Samet, and we're gonna take a look at some pretty cool. Interesting ultra wideband tech from who? NXP. NXP. Take us on into this. All right. So NXP is going to show us some uh, some of the uses for uh, ultra wideband chips that are going to be coming to cars and all kinds of other devices over the next couple of years. You've already got if you have an iPhone 11, you already have ultra wideband in there, and we're going to see some of the potential applications of how that can be used. So this is basically the ultra wideband chip, and this tiny thing here is a 10 meter antenna. 
Nice. So Ultra Wideband okay. was 15 years ago uh, defined as a competitor to Wi-Fi. Right. And it's completely dead as a com uh, communication technology. No one needed it anymore. It lost out in a standardization war. Right. So the question was when we came up, now we go, hey, we have great solutions on Ultra Wideband. Everyone was like, uh, you want to revitalize that old uh, that thing? No. Now, what happened last year is so we worked on the algorithms to make it more robust, to, to get it really, really into a nice tracking. Right. And what that uh, leads to is, uh, join me for a okay. second. It leads to very nice tracking. Sure. This is our executive tracker, as we call it. Okay. So you can, you can switch it even into Pac-Man mode, and you see what Lars is doing here. So I'm either the ghost or the little Pac-Man. Right. But um, if, if you see me walking now. It's tracking me, basically. Now, if that works so nicely, what you can do is, you can, of course, access your car. Right. But even more so, you leave your car, walk up to your house, your walkway lights are switching on, your front door is opening while you are approaching it. We have a front door demo over so there. there. So, that you basically, so exactly, it's, it's, it's exactly tracking you down over two meters, one meter, 50 centimeters, open up. And in your house, your sound system is following you. So you are walking down the aisle, into the kitchen, into the living room without waking up your entire family. But it's like your digital bubble is following yeah, you. Right. Now, of course, some of the of the phone makers have already ultra wideband. So Apple has ultra wideband announced to be in the phones uh, since uh, September. Not our chip, by the way, but their own uh, solution. But uh, we have Samsung phones in the meantime uh, as prototypes for that. Um, we have the fine ranging yeah. consortium, so Samsung, Bosch, so so Sony, are there. So every all the ultra wideband it's, it's, it's technology. Nice Normally, you never would have that momentum because everyone would start now with his own flavor and uh, how right. do I do it? The good news was we could roll back to the old IEEE standard. Okay. Not for the communication technology, but you could say, if you want to build your device, if you want to build your device, use the IEEE standard and then you can understand my device. Okay. And that was suddenly, so it, it was there and this is enormous boost, of course, and this, this uh, normal pissing contest that you have on the, on the uh, standardization wars right. were out. All patents also expired, gone. So basically what we're going to see is for sure at Mobile World Congress, we're going to see uh, quite some mobile phones coming up with that technology. Right. And then of course also these, these type of, of smart gadgets for, okay. for your asset tracking. Nice. And I see uh, really uh, quite a big bang this year, some, some car launches, fixing your children's seat. If it is in the car, disable the airbags, um, getting out the, the trailer hook uh, right. just by making a move. Right. Um, improving the car key intelligence. So in other words, a year ago or today, yeah, the two of us, we go for a beer, we get hammered, you take my car key, can drive away. Okay. If I have my car key in my in my mobile phone and I walk towards the car, the car knows or the key knows my biometric walking pattern, can take my heart rate from the from the watch. Okay. Can, can suddenly say, hey Lars, either you are so hammered that you cannot walk a straight line anymore, or or you are not Lars. So can you please authenticate <laughs> So Samuel, that's the point. Can you please authenticate yourself again? So right. what I do by that, by accident. I'm notching up the security of that car key because right. you cannot do anything with my car key. Right. Now, even better, I'm flying from Hamburg to Vegas, you flying to Hamburg, my car is at the airport. You could do Airbnb for cars. You text me on the airport, hey Lars, uh, uh, I in Hamburg uh, right. again for a beer. And no, I'm on the way. Can I have your car? Right. Yes, okay. And what I'm doing is I'm sending you like a banking card transaction. I'm sending you my car key for two days, for the weekend. It's okay. Okay. And I do not even need to send you my biometrics because this certificate, like a payment certificate, right. lands on your mobile phone with your biometrics. Okay. So you can use it even if Sam then steals your key so again. now it's Doesn't still work. only locked down to so, me. Exactly. Okay. And um, I mean, my son hates me already for that because I told him that he gets, of course, a key for my BMW that is limited to 120 kilometers an hour and not German motorway uh, left lane to 150 free, free ride, right? <laughs> so these type of things you can do and can start tailoring the world around you just by yeah, technically uh, very, very accurate and very fast and smart uh, asset tracking. That's basically the story we're doing here. Yeah? I like technology like this because a lot of times at CES we'll hear stories about 
all of these glamorous things is not necessarily they, they practical. Happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, say, uh, you know, a, a, a flying vehicle uh, that's built by Hyundai. You know, something that may someday possibly become reality. Shall I show you the, the, the aerodynamics uh, quickly? Uh, sure, why not? What you see in here is a windscreen of a Ford F-150. And we have two of our microcontrollers, two aerodynamics 8 uh, microcontrollers operating this entire real estate. So all these screens that are here, all, the all 11 cluster. screens here are operated by two microcontrollers, by by two. This is the, the, the twin set that we are just up integrating into one next generation. So in future, one generation will operate in one this. And here it is. So the two of these babies here are operating the entire real estate. Now, on each of those, we have four, four separated islands. Why? Because you can shield these islands from each other. You, you can uh, uh, stop them from, from sharing executable code. Why? This here is highly functional safety relevant, the instrument cluster and the head-up display. This one here is highly entertainment relevant, but if it stalls, if my kids have malware on this one, who cares? Of course. Okay. Okay. So in the past, or as of today, you have separate ECUs for all of those. Now what we have in future is we bring all of that into one piece of silicon, and all of these four islands can look into the same image memory, but cannot share executable code. What that means is, my navigation is rendering here. The closer I get to my destination, I can move the navigation picture here by looking into the same image memory, and I can move it even up here. But I do not compromise on the functional safety of the displays. Okay. You cannot store these things here because you cannot exchange executables. Okay. The worst thing that could happen is, here this stalls and the navigation looks crap. Yeah, but no functional impact right. in, in, in that respect. So this is the stuff that we are doing, and on one of those idon mixes, we have them. Then we have Unity approaching us, and they have a gaming engine. If you have these type of rendering engines, you can, of course, very quickly render here a very nice environment. So not an accurate picture of your environment, but a quickly rendered one showing you the objects that are in your in your proximity Again, side, side impact we don't uh, want detection. Or, or, right. <laughs> we don't and, want and this is exactly okay. You now we have, of course, that the boat use case, uh, um, not not exactly for driving on the roads, but but these type of, of solutions that you quickly can render your your environment in a simple way that the driver understands it well. Right. That is, of course, the stuff that we immediately have here on these uh, on these solutions, and that's. Uh, some of the of the of the goodies <laughs> that we have here uh, are really hot. Nice. Nice. Thank you so much, Lars. Sam. Always great to Pleasure. talk to you. Really Looking forward to the next so one. Much. Thank you. Some impossible White yeah, Castle burgers. Yeah, it's it's right. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Let's take a bite. Let's see. All right, let's see what happens. Tastes like a White Castle. It does. <laughs> AI is a company that makes a very uh, unique kind of LiDAR for autonomous vehicles. I think I remember seeing an estimate that the LiDAR Google's been using at Waymo is like $11,000 a unit. They're very, very expensive. That is a big stopping point in, in making autonomous vehicles. Sure. You got a less expensive way to do it? Yes, we've got a less expensive way to do it. I mean, practically, I've been at AI for maybe 18 months. Costs have dropped 10x right in front of me. We've got two large tier ones behind us, Hella and LG. And because we have that, we've been able to bring down the cost. We can make these units at maybe 1500 to 2000 wow. a pop. That includes the camera, that includes the software, it includes all of the neural networks that go. So it's become real affordable. Yep. Yeah, so you guys have a very interesting approach with the combination of the camera and the LiDAR sensor in a single unit. Yeah, first of all, the camera does have some advantages. It's proven technology. It's been, in, um, it's been out there for decades now. There are good algorithms that are written for it. And it, it does work well for things like signs and uh, sometimes even lanes. Uh, but what the LiDAR does that the camera can't is, is uh, is is at night. Uh, the the lidar is an, uses infrared technology, so it does not need it does not use the same technology as the as a the camera. There's also cases where, um, for example, there's low dynamic range because there's blooming. There's like really bright sunlight behind you. The camera just gets blinded. Corner <laughs> cases are really holding back autonomy in the industry. What we did is we combined a camera and a lidar and we bore sighted them so that the point cloud that we get out of the lidar is uh, has true color in it. And we we also believe that color holds real information about objects uh, in any given particular scene. And we are also unique in the industry in that we're doing perception out of the box. 
So we provide object lists right out of the box. So it's not just a sensor, it's real object lists that say, okay, you're, you're detecting XYZ object, you're classifying it, you're, you're detecting lanes, you're detecting free space, you're doing occupancy grid. So there's an incredible amount of intelligence all that, that, that can all be squeezed within a box. And all of this you can do at a price point that I, I mentioned earlier. So it's, it's becoming really compelling for the, for the industry to be able to do this. Right, with the camera image, you can classify what you're seeing. Yes. You, know, you can say, you know, there's a car, there's a pedestrian, there's a sign. And then, you know, most LiDAR units have a fixed scan pattern for yes. the laser beam. And yours doesn't. Most LiDARs treat every object equally, like, you know, the leaf on the, on the tree is the same as the child in front of me, which is clearly not the case. And we took lessons from, the, from biomimicry, the way humans sense objects around us. You know, the thing is, when we actually see information around us, we don't take all the information in, wait for all the information to be, get collected and process it. It turns out that humans do pattern matching with the visual cortex, and it's not all taken into the brain. If you take it all into the brain, it's called autism, right? Because, because that's what autistic Too people much. do. They, they take too much information. Yeah. What we did was we said, we're just gonna focus on what's, what really matters to us. Yeah. And, uh, and and so when we look at a particular scene, we've got various algorithms inside the sensor that uh, that can foveate on just the objects that matter using region of interest technology. And we can do several multiple ROIs at all at the same time. And the performance that we're getting is really impressive. Uh, we are able to demonstrate up to 175 meters uh, with, uh, on a 10% reflective object, like take a gray board and put it at 175 meters and we're able to detect that reliably. And for us, as a company, it's never been about just the range. It's kind of stupid. You go talk to various LiDAR guys, ask them, hey, what are your performance specs? They'll tell you, oh, our range is 200 meters, 300 meters. We've always believed that's not the real spec. The real spec is how far can you classify an object? An object that really matters to us, can you classify it at 150 meters? This is what we're seeing right now. Is this live sensor data? So what we're showing here is a trucking use case, a long range trucking use case. You can see the sensor. That sensor is our fourth generation uh, sensor. It's called the AE-110. Oh, it's, it's tiny. And it's not rotating. It's mounted on top of the of the truck. So this is a long range use case. Yeah, you know that sensor is you know the, the live point cloud is is right here, and it also has a little camera that's showing what's what's available. What it's doing is it's figuring out all of the pertinent objects in that particular region of in that particular field of view, and it's putting regions of interest, and it's only shooting it's 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 shooting uh, uh, it's it's allocating more photons to each of those regions of interest. At the same time, it's also doing a background scan to make sure that we don't lose anything important. So, for example, if someone walks out, you know. I mean, lateral entry is 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 a predominant cause for a lot of the accidents a that we pedestrian have. Pedestrian walking into the road, yeah, right? Absolutely. You don't want to hit a pedestrian, yeah. so, and that's lateral. That's going right across. Someone the view. backing out of their so driveway. So we don't have 150 feet. We don't have, you've got yeah. a little less time. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so, so the green objects are moving objects. The red is static. What is going on there? Yeah. So the red is static. The green objects are dynamic. So they're actually kind of moving. So you can actually see the beams. Kind of, kind yeah, of those don't here. move. Those, those don't move. And now you've got, you've got, uh, basically the lidars looking at that scene and saying that's an object, that's an object. So that's it doesn't object. have to waste energy once it understands that's a static it, object. Exactly. It only has to worry about things that are moving. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We're here with Matt Mustafi, the uh, general manager of Etron for uh, Audi of America, and that encompasses all your electric vehicles and. The, the next electric Audi that's coming to your lineup is right behind us here. Tell us about it. So this is the e-tron Sportback. We just showed it at the LA Auto Show uh, last month in December. And it's really our latest iteration uh, to the e-tron family. So we started uh, in 2019 with the e-tron SUV that we also have on display over here. The e-tron Sportback is now the next step in that e-tron family where we've given it a you know, slightly more uh, raked roof line, um, but kept true to that e-tron philosophy, which is how can we make you know a car that's as seamless to go electric as any other car on the road? So sticking true to that, but giving it a slightly more design forward appearance. Are there any differences between this and the, the original e-tron that you guys launched last year? So we have made other some visuals. Yeah, yeah. So we have made some improvements technically to the car. 
uh, which should add for some more range. We don't have official EPA figures yet, but we expect them to be obviously higher than what we had for the e-tron uh, SUV. Obviously, both due to the uh, roof line that you see here, but other technical enhancements. Uh, we've unlocked more of the battery capacity. We've made some improvements with the motors and the cooling on the car to help make it more efficient and thus get more range. And there's one more e-tron that's over on the other side of the booth here that we'll take a look at later. But uh, tell us about that one, the Q4 e-tron. Yeah, so that is our Q4 e-tron concept. So we showed that at Geneva last year. Uh, and that is basically a very close to production concept car, if you will. So um, the e-tron family, as we've announced so far, is obviously the e-tron SUV and the e-tron Sportback. We also have the e-tron GT coming. And then beyond that, we have- That the, one's a sexy looking beast. Yeah, we showed that at LA uh, in 2018. Yeah. Um, and beyond the e-tron GT, we have the Q4 e-tron, which we have on display here, uh, coming after that. And that's really more of our, um, you know, lower priced, more budget friendly e-tron version. Got a compact get. crossover. Exactly, to get more people into the e-tron brand. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Matt. Thanks. We have this new functionality. We have actually a, a microchip that is possible to show black and white movies, for example, on the wall or whatever. What we use is this chip. This chip looks like one, but it's 1.3 million micromirrors. And this is 1.3 million micromirrors we can show complete. It's so similar to uh, DLP technology that we this have is on this. TVs. Actually, this is a Texas instrument chip. It's, it is. This oh. is the DLP technology. Okay. So same but thing. this is made. This chip is special for automotive because we have minus 40 degrees Celsius up to 120 degrees Celsius. In the normal DLP, in the meeting room, has 20 degrees Celsius room temperature. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> so that's a bit more complicated. That's what we have then here. Actually, this is a show, but we have then real functionalities. As you can see here, we produce. A complete carpet in front of the car. It starts at 10 meters. It goes up to 60 meters. They can light up the lane that you're driving yes. in. The, the camera, the, our camera detects the lane. We detect if there are other cars, and it's then the size of the carpet. And then we produce a uh, project, and also two, I would say, lines in this carpet. So you have the carpet, and these two lines, these two lines, this, the carpet is the lane, and the two lines is where is your car in this lane. So where your tires hard. are going to roll over. Yeah. The width of this black lines, the outer width is the width of your car, including the mirrors. Okay. And in between is the distance between your wheels. Okay. So if you see a hole on the road, you can decide, drive over it or drive around it, for yeah. example. Yeah. Or, or an animal or some, some yeah, object yeah. to get left or, on the road. But you can see here the construction zone area gets a bit smaller. Yep. And you still see how much space do you have to the side. And we had six weeks ago, we had a presentation, the world premiere in LA. Mm -hmm. And yep. uh, I, I drove with journalists. One, I was driving, they were on the side here, one was behind, and we went on the highway and we showed them this uh, functionality and there were a truck in front of us. I said, oh, watch out now. We went close to the truck. Everybody could see that we get close to the truck. Nobody got nervous because everybody could see there's still enough space. Right. The only one who got nervous was the truck driver. <laughs> All, whenever we did this, the truck driver went to the side because he thought, hey, they will, they will hit me. Yeah. But everybody in my car knew, no, we won't because they could see this. And they should, that's you know exactly you, how far away you yes, are based on and, that and light carpet. So, so much comfort and safety for the driving situation on a highway. Well, there's also another really important <laughs> aspect of this as well that I'd like to tell us about, which is that the high beams, the high beam control. Yeah, of course, uh, this system actually works uh, all our cars have this matrix light system. This car actually is by standard a matrix beam system. That, is, that means we have LEDs, we have 12 segments, and if there's an oncoming car, we can clear it out. Mm -hmm. And this system has then additional 1.3 million pixels, so we can clear a bit sharper, a bit easier. It's more smooth. The movement is a bit more smooth. Yeah. It's something that we have. I would say for Europe, it's, uh, yeah, we have this since uh, six years now, seven yeah. years. Unfortunately, for the US, it's not legal in for the US. US yeah. Maybe it's, it's still not legal, but we had discussions with yeah. NHTSA this morning. We will see what happens. We will yeah. see what happens. Well, I think one uh, one of the interesting things with, with the high beams, especially, is when you're driving down the road. If there's a car coming towards you, you know, traditionally you'd have to go back to low beams, turn off the high beams, yeah. and go back to low beams. You don't see anything. Yeah. Yeah. Now but with this system, you drive. Actually, 
the, 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 the big advantage is you drive always high beam on yeah. without glaring anybody. So it's a win-win situation for everybody. Because it just it only dim, because with the camera it knows where the car yeah. is coming coming towards you. It just dims yeah. those those yeah. lights, yeah. those pixels, because, and keeps yes. everything else. You lit still up. have to, you have still the complete high beam. It's just the like, area where the oncoming cars. That's that's yeah. separate. Everything yeah. else is complete high beam. Yeah. And let's say uh, actually for you, you oh, you as a driver, you feel and this pedestrian detection that we have, so this is the, the, the high beam situation. You don't clear the, the car in front of you, and you could see. Uh, we react actually also on the distance, eh? that's right. what we do. Eh? And the other thing is, of course, uh, if you have a night vision system, we also can detect pedestrians. We blink on him, and afterwards, we project the line just to his feet. So he can see, okay, oh, I should step back, whatever, and he can do because he's not cleared. Yeah. Because we only uh, project the line until his feet. Right. We don't clear him in the face, so he can react. Right. And he's, um, it's also some sort of communication. Yeah. Because the main idea behind of this was some sort of yeah, starting the era of communication with light. Yeah. This is uh, light communication in the front. And we also have light communication in the rear. That's with the OLED technology where we say it's some sort of a display for the rear for the future. This is now, coming up now. And the OLED technology where we say it's a display that's in the, the I would say, closed feature. Most new car concepts have big displays. Right. Big, black, ugly displays. <laughs> yeah. So in this case, we want a windscreen or a, a normal glass hub. And then we show only this information that you need. Not an overflow, only the information you need, for example, to driving or for example, to have music. So, do you imagine anything on the dash uh, below this, or is this the entire dash? That's the entire dash. That's the whole thing. Yeah. But that's not a design uh, concept, no, no, it's no, only it a technology got concept. It, got yeah. it. And you can use it, choose it here, so you can see it through. If oh, I can see through it. Yeah, you can see. I can see like here, I can see. I can see the road ahead of me. Yeah. But it's autonomous, some so people, I don't some care. Some people want the big information. Other people don't want too right. much information. So now you can choose the movie. And it's going to go see it. Oh. And you see That's behind the movie, we have black. And you can see the movie, the movie in full quality. Yeah, left and right, the it's reference. Yeah. What? It's right. our first concept, our it's first clever. prototype. We want to improve the transparency in the next years. We want it carved, we want it renders. Yeah. But the movie doesn't, I can see the movie perfectly. That's nice. Yeah. Is this OLED? OLED display, a transparent OLED display with a black layer behind them. I finally found a drone that will hold Aunt Pruitt. Can I, can I have it? <laughs> One of the highlights of our visit to CES was the Ford booth where we got to talk to Darren Palmer. He's the global BEV program director at Ford who convinced the Ford CEO and board of directors that it was time to do a Mustang electric vehicle. Our board and our CEO said it's coming to the time where the technology on battery electric cars is reaching a point we can deliver to customers what they really want at a price point that's viable for them, for Ford customers. And so they said, but we need to work in a completely different way. And we need to determine how, where to play and how to win for Ford. So they, they put together a team called Team Edison. And they were made up like a startup company made up of different members of different skills that would work, create their own culture, work in a different way, and they're based in Cork Town in the center of Detroit. Yeah, we even took them out of the regular Ford Product Development Center, moved them into, into downtown Detroit. Absolutely, because we needed, we wanted to create a, a, a different culture, more like a Silicon Valley culture. Everybody's equal. I got no office. In fact, I got no desk. And we work at different ages and backgrounds and groups and listen to each other and work on the problems together instead of the hierarchical method. So that's what we put together. And the first part of that strategy came at for Ford, we've been making compliance cars. Um, and we needed to make, you know, to progress electric cars, you, you need to make something aspirational that people want to buy. Yeah, instead of, instead of cars that uh, you're building because the regulations say you have to sell this number of electric vehicles, you wanted to find cars that, or great cars that people actually would want. And you know, that, that was... I'm your prototype customer because I did buy a Tesla for that very reason. I spent a lot more money 
this is a third of the cost of the Model X. I would, but I wanted a nice car, and I honestly, and Sam's the one who convinced me. I wanted a car company to make it. I wanted a he calls them metal benders. I want a I want a car company to make it. A company with a dealer in my town that I can go to. And so when you guys announced the Mach E, I said, Sam, I think this is the one. He, he, he agreed. So it's interesting you chose the Mustang, Mark, because I had a Mustang. Yes. yes and I know a lot of Mustang owners. I think you probably thought we're going to be a little bit heated about this. But as a Mustang owner, I don't mind. I think that's great. It doesn't look like a classic Mustang, but it's got the Mustang lights, and it's got the spirit of the Mustang. I think that's maybe what's important. And we also wanted to do what's you know, authentic to us. You mustn't, yeah, try and be, mustn't try and be somebody else, yeah. okay? And that led us to what is our most cherished brands that, that we love and, and why? And one of those is Mustang, the best-selling sports coupe in the world for a long time. I launched that car in Europe and saw the love that was there for Europe as well. It's amazing. And, and the spirit of that, it, the performance, the looks, the emotion, and affordability as well. That's what's groundbreaking about that car. That's what drives us with, that's what Ford does. And so only now the tech was ready to be affordable to do that. <laughs> so I'll take you around some of the input in the car. So the screen is obviously uh, dominant and, I, and I'll take you through how some of that interface works. I'll tell you works. what, immediately, I like how clean it is. Yeah. Very clean and very simple. And I think that that's important because electric vehicle doesn't need all the knobs and buttons. Absolutely. And, dials, right? we, and that's what led us to the larger screen without the... Uh, and Here's the other thing I like. I'm going to put my phone right here and it's just going to charge and it will automatically connect Absolutely. to CarPlay. I yeah. love that. So I think um, that's brilliant. You know, the, the center screen is a huge part of the car. Yeah, beautiful. It, it's a unique um, HMI, as I say, and it has no menu, no back button, and no learning curve. So, and so here, for example, there are two things. There is you and a car. Right. So when there is you, you press you, it knows you, this is Jim, our CEO. <laughs> it will know you as you approach the car, it locks onto your Bluetooth low energy, loads your profile into the car and all your settings are loaded, plus how you like the system display. So and I'll talk all more. of your settings. Everything. It's not just your seat position, it's everything. Every single thing. Nice. And now, so another part of this is has, is is to make your life easier. So if you phone your wife on a Monday afternoon when you get in the car, it will offer phone your wife on a Monday afternoon. Not on a Tuesday afternoon, because that's not when you do it, on Monday afternoon. Awesome. If you go to the gym on a Wednesday morning, it will offer this. If you jump out of your office and run to another place and go get coffee, it that's will awesome. offer these things up. But, so that's machine learning. This one is not got it on you. There's another demo over there. And you'll see that they'll be coming up here, and it's you. The next thing is it consolidates all your stuff because people want their own stuff. Right. So it, via wireless, it will connect to the car and it has, um, you, you can offer, this is Apple, right? So yeah. you, you have CarPlay, right. but you also have via device link, other things. So for example, Pandora, if you like Pandora, it will give you Pandora directly. It's actually using device link. You don't nice. know or care. You just no, use device link. like wireless in, in yes, this one? Yes, it is in this one. It's okay. the new version yeah. and it's wireless. All of your stuff will come to the front and, and we people used to have about four things, nav, radio, phone, music. It's a lot Street. more complicated these days. There's <laughs> right. a lot more stuff. Right. And so if you want to change the radio, you can. You still have the control it one knows push. Because it knows because it says, oh, it's you what like you the radio. Because you what you use the radio. If you don't right. use the radio, it'll go off. And I've got six here, but really most, I've not, we watched a lot of people, they end up with these four, right? Is this part of Sync 3 or is this something? Sync, oh no, Sync, sync 4 Sync is the four. basis. Okay. But this overlay, yeah. the, the front end is an all new overlay. Nice. The internal team name was Menlo. Okay. Called, they named themselves because software Menlo. teams named themselves. Yes, they did. So they named themselves Menlo, but the external name we call it is Sync 4A, right? Okay. So, so okay. Um, um, okay. So, so this, these cards, readjusting is a key feature. And it, what it means is most of the time, what you you want is one right touch yeah yeah no, no swiping from the very side smart. because because very nice. you know, okay. so that's so that's a key characteristic there um and then the car so um one piece we our customers told us they want the driver information separate to right. keep this clean right and to always be ready so th and this should be right in front of my yeah. eyes yep and so this range show here that's not just a range that will show your key landmarks on it as well so it'll show your home and your work and it, what it's showing you is i've got 
you've got loads of power, right? Your work is back here and your home is here. You just at a glance, I've got loads of power to do what I want to do today. I, I haven't got to start calculating. Perfect. So that's very easy. I mean, we know a battery gauge. We recognize that yes. immediately, and that's the range. You immediately recognize right. that. Right. And yeah. then by adding the landmarks on, you, you know how that's much range home, have I got. That's your work. Right. You nice. know you've got enough, you say. That's and if you really put the destination sweet. in, it's got, we go that's to the gym. Really sweet. And you can just, you just you know, so it's that. That's uh, visceral almost. Yes, you really get exactly. it. Yeah. yeah. Now, you've got a Mustang, so notice ground speed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. I knew a Mustang owner is going to know that. Okay. There is cues like that absolutely I love that. Everywhere. Well, even just the pony here. Yeah, everywhere. This is exactly like my Mustang armrest was. I feel at home already, right. immediately. And yeah. That's what we want, okay? Yeah. So now here's another the one. The only difference, I had a stick. <laughs> you, 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 no you stick did. here. This you, is uh, This is how you change the gear. I won't touch it, but... That's the knob. It is electronic and it, yep. and it, and uh, um, and in your know, infinite spin, so you, so you can do it without without having to look down. So it powered off because it was not yeah, started. Yeah, yeah. So um, here comes the AC. That's quite nice. So um, yeah, so that that's the, you can just you don't have to look down. You just spin. You just know, and it'll be there. Bit, yeah, and it shows here too. Yeah, it, it does. So you can you can see it. Yeah. I'm just clearing these. So um, so the cluster is important, uh, or the, the second screen here mm -hmm. now. But every setting of the car, so. It has full auto drive, mm -hmm. okay, uh, and with soft, uh, full of software update. Every single module is full software update. Most of them are AB swap, which means it downloads it first, says new, new ready, want to go? Power off on, done. Instant. There is no time. That's awesome. Because uh, you know, that's important to us. And if you My buy Tesla concept, would say, you update it, you're going to be an hour and a half before you can drive yeah. your car. It's, it's, got, it's kind of the, uh, similar to the way a Chromebook works, where right. it downloads, it updates in the Just background. Reboot. Right. Yeah. So that, that's all included with the car, as is all the updates. And, I and love so the thought that you put into this. It's as if you, you benefit from everything that's gone before, and you're saying, how can we do this better? How, what, and most importantly, what does the customer expect? I think it's really great that you listen so well to your customers. Thank I think you. that's fantastic. That, that, yeah, that's Jim's new method of yeah. how to do it. Yeah. And, and it's ask, you, you go early, don't finish it and ask yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, it's too late. They, they don't, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. You, you ask, what do you want to do? Right. Not what is the solution. And so one is the door. So, for example, in the morning, when you come down, we ask which type of door handle. And we said to ourselves, a oh, wrong question. No. What are you trying to do? <laughs> I want to get in. Well, I've got a coffee and a bag, and, and I, so when you walk to the car, it will identify you, and that. it will open the door for I you about three inches. Then you put your elbow in and jump in the car. And using Bluetooth LE on your phone yes. as your primary key. You Absolutely. do have a fob, but that's yeah. a backup. Uh, yep, we actually have the pin code on the side as well, so you can also even do if that. You, you lose your phone, smash it, you can pin code into the nice. car and pin code start the car. Nice. One of the big concerns you know, for people that are, especially for those that are getting an EV for the first time, is charging. You know, yes. we're, we're, we're charging, and yes. what have you done for that? Right, so this was the subject, again, really strong human-centered work. Yep. We thought about this, and we started, we went in all sorts of places. Then we came back to, hold on, what do you need? Well, most people, they need a level two charger at home. Yes. So, and many of our customers, we anticipate, might be buying this for the first time. Right. They don't even know they need a level two. Right. And they have to get right. into it or understand how many kilowatts and what type of installation. We said, stop it, stop it. What they need, is the thing they need to charge the car with the car. So we provide the charger with the car. Right. Now, all you need is a dryer socket, basically, right. in the garage. That's important because, actually, that my decision to buy a Tesla was all based on the supercharger network. And yes. as soon as I learned you have CCS and you're gonna have Electrify America, that makes a huge yes. difference oh. to me. Right, yeah. we, we, we have consolidated a network of 12 and a half thousand chargers yeah. in the US. Huge. Uh, and we put it all on the system and all you have one card access to all of it. That's, that's uh, because we, we've tried them and we know they've, there's like right. only four different cards and it's confusing. That's crazy. Electrify America will be tying into, that's, that's gonna nice. keep growing, everybody yep. can use it. And then we've got additional networks of green lots and others, but we're just gonna make it easy for you. Yep. And you get a certain amount per month. You don't know, have to think about it. And the routing system, when you put a route, customers want to ask lots of complicated questions about how, how to charge and where to stop. Yeah. Basically, it just does it for you. It routes, tells you how long you've got to stop and for how long to charge, and that's all you need to worry about. And, it's, and you, the, the payment is already covered in the nice. thing. So you just don't, you don't have to think about it. You just put the destination it tells you, right? Darren, I only have one more question for you. When am I getting my car? <laughs> <laughs> so we've said uh, all... Yes. This year. Yes. Okay. So I'm That's there. I'm there launching it. It's this year. Darren. Thank you. Pleasure. I've touched you... the surface. There's many more. Oh, I know. <laughs> and you know what? We'll be covering this a lot because it's going to be my my new car. So I'm very excited about Thank it. Thank you very much. I too. think you have nailed it. As far as I can tell, this is the car. 
this is the way to go. Thank yeah. you very much. Really really, really I love the greenfield development, starting from scratch, doing it right. Really, really great. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Great Darren Palmer. Thank you. What do you think? Should I should I take it? Oh, this just, is a done deal. Just step on it right now? This yeah. is a done deal. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Darren. Sit the horn, people will move. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, it comes down here, sweeps down here. So you have that kind of Mustang fastback It does profile, have the back. But you still have this additional stuff. Actually, yeah. th that's how you get that extra headroom yeah, so yeah, the yeah. tall adults can sit in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very smart. Yeah. Honestly, I love my Mustang, but I was too, I'm getting too old to be able to climb into it anymore. It was kind of like, oh yeah, I gotta get. So I like it, I can just step and in. And in the front, you've got a trunk in the a front trunk, a front that that oh. is big enough uh, to hold like a big cooler. Yeah, it's uh, got a drain. Or, you know, yeah, and it's got a drain. So yeah, you know, if you the want to use it for a tailgate, there. tailgate you party, bet. throw some ice in there and a case of beer. Sam, you've done a great job. Thank, Thank you. you so much for showing us some of the highlights of the CES Auto Parts, and uh, we'll see you back in, uh, in Petaluma in uh, on Saturday. Absolutely. Thank you, Sam. All right. All take right. Care, take care. Safe travels yeah, back to Detroit. Detroit.